Welcome to Field to Fork Cooking with Abby J. Today's program is brought to you in part by Ingalls Supermarkets and the Ingalls Table. Now here's chef and host of the show, Abby J, to introduce her special guest for today's show. Welcome to Field of Fork. I'm Abby J, and today we have a really great show. Peggy Bussey is here representing the Ingalls Table, and we have Bob. I've been dying to see you. Peggy, welcome to the show, and look at this. This is Halloween. It's trick or treat. What a beautiful uh, floral arrangement. A little bit different. Let's talk about it. Yeah, so what I did was I was looking for something with a little bit of fun. People can do buffet pieces for Halloween parties, and kids seem to like Bob. So what I did was I was at Ingalls. I found a trick-or-treat bucket that looked like a cauldron, and I found Bob, and Bob was born. I think Bob's <laughs> going to entertain a lot of folks, especially your six-year-old grandchild. And, yeah. you know, I, he can leave here. I, I don't have a need for Bob, but uh, I, I think it's fun. It's a fun yeah. piece. Joseph a, is kind of attached to Bob already. It's kind of weird. I don't know why mm -hmm. he's got a fetish with, with skeletons, but he really likes them a lot. Well, it's a fun piece. And, you know, Halloween this time of year, people like to get out and, and look at uh, the, I mean, they're, they're looking at everything. And that's one thing, if you're go going to use it as an entertaining piece right. for a buffet, uh, they would certainly notice it. Exactly, decorations. Mm -hmm. I mean, for your, your coffee table or a couch table behind your couch makes a great place for it to sit. Um, even in the center of your dining room table, if you don't mm -hmm. use it, and it's just something right. that you set buffet style around. So mm -hmm. just an idea. Um, everybody's always asking me, what can I do? What can I do? They, they can't think of things. So I'm always trying to come up with something that you could even do at home, or you can go to your local Ingalls floral department mm -hmm. and ask somebody for something. Well, I similar. noticed these, uh, when they were hanging them up the mm -hmm. other day and I said, oh, they've got skeletons. So, uh, you know, folks, you can go in there and this is what you can do. And I, I think you've done a really good job with it. So, oh, well, thank you. Besides uh, that fun piece, let's show the audience some other things uh, that they might consider for the, the harvest season. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get into some just um, fall centerpiece work. Maybe things that if you're having company for the holidays or even as far as into Thanksgiving, things that you can put together that you can just do in the middle of your table or like I said, anywhere you want in your house. This right here could go for both seasons, I think. Any season. When, yeah, so. From, um, from now all the way straight through. Right, right. That's what I like about this mm -hmm. piece is because you, not, you have multiple uses. Exactly. So mm -hmm. I've already started a little bit just for time. Um, so if you guys have ever watched me before, I always explain Oasis comes in a dry form have to soak it about 10 minutes. Don't push it in, let it submerge on its own so it doesn't get air pockets. And mm -hmm. that's what most people have to use to create a shape. Um, I work a lot straight into water, but it takes a lot of time to learn how to weave your greens so that you have a foundation and this makes it easier for people starting at home. And you don't want to get in, into a hurry. That's no. when it will, you know, exactly. break. Exactly. You don't want dry pockets because what dry yeah. pockets does if you get your flour stuck into the foam and it hits a dry pocket, it has no way to drink. Right. So that's your dry foam. I already cut it up and I put it in my container and this was just a bowl at my house. I, yeah. I just pulled a bowl out of my mm -hmm. cabinet. So it just happened to be the right color. So it's a star today. Yeah. Um, and then I put my Oasis in there. I cut it to the size I needed. I went ahead and taped it with some um, floral tape. And I've gone ahead and started kind of, like I said, trying to save some time. And this so, is a fresh eucalyptus. This is so, all fresh. So this really gives the whole house a 
a mm -hmm. real seasonal, you know, scent to where, you know, you're getting getting into the seasons. So once you get the foam in there, I always try to put water in the container mm -hmm. just so it drinks. One thing that people don't realize is they think because the Oasis is wet that you don't need to continue, continue to water, but you do because the Oasis soaks the water up, it feeds into the stems, and then you got to do it just like a regular vase. Also, when you buy your cut flowers at Ingalls, you can also, mm. all of them come with flower food attached to the bouquet. So this is designed for cut flowers. You just open it up, pour it into your water. I've already got you some know, in here. A lot of times people just forget to do this. They do. And there's, there's reasons why you want to, because this will last, this will let your flowers last much longer longevity right? i mean if you if you take this and you put it in your water especially in a vase arrangement where you can take your flowers out and you can recut your stems put fresh water in there put a little bit of fresh flower food you can also get this at the ingles floral counter they always have extra of this sitting in a container somewhere so you can grab multiples if you want to if you take good care of your flowers and you do flower maintenance sometimes you can get three weeks out of a lot of right. different variety. Mm -hmm. So just something that you might want to know. People ask me all the time, how do, you get, how do you get so much time out of your flowers? And it's just kind of taking care of it. Everything has right. to be taken care of. Exactly, exactly. So what we're going to do is, like I said, I've already mm -hmm. gotten started. And what we're going to do is we're just going to start filling in and adding. So I'm going to take um, just any kind of flower, any kind of green. This is um, called pittosporum. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to snap it off with my finger. I'm going to give it a fresh cut and I'm just going to start filling in and greening in this container a little bit. So Peggy, tell me, yep. when you're going to the floral mm -hmm. area at Ingalls, yep. if you're looking for this, they can order it or is it there? Um, just depends on what store you're in. They have, they have, um, they can order what they want is on the order form and depending right. on what store you shop at or what their market is at that particular mm -hmm. location. But if you're doing an event and you want particular um, kind of greens, you can always go to them and say, listen, I saw Peggy and yeah. um, she was using different kind of greens and I was wanting to know if you could get me some pit. Um, I liked it because it seemed like a good filler and it seemed like something that grows local. So if you could um, maybe order some of that, I need it in about three weeks. We're having a party and just wondered if you could order me some and I'll pick it up. And most of the time it's not a, it's not a problem. So anyway, that's pit. We've added pit mm -hmm. to it. Now we're going to add, actually, we're going to add some of this uh, silver dollar uke. Oh, I love so this. So this is kind of a bushy uke. And the thing I like about it is it hides a lot of mechanics. We're doing a class today. So class. this is a free class yeah. presented by our floral specialist by the Ingalls Table. Yeah. And you know what? While you're doing that, I'm going to go yes. ahead and talk about the Ingalls Table magazine. This just got hot off the, it just came hot off the press and you can find it at your local Ingalls in the deli. Uh, this, uh, this premieres a lot of different, really great recipes. This is a cheese ball, Jasmine Queen, great job. I mean, if you're trying again to do something fun, uh, this uh, cheese ball is a, is a way to go. Yeah. But there's also healthier recipes. We've got Michael McMurtry and his fennel toast. Uh, this is uh, made with all, it's all vegan. So everybody's got a style. And That'd that's be good for the, my youngest son. He's vegan. Right, right. And then we've got a drink. Uh, keep yourself warm in five different ways. Uh, the drink, drinks are good. Also, there's also the sweet and salty pretzels. If you're looking like your kids, six-year-old kids, you get the pretzel rolls, you just dip them in chocolate and look at all the little toppings. This is a great activity for kids. And you can do this, you know, uh, for, for the holidays. And they're very festive as well. So make sure you get out there and grab this free copy of the Ingalls Table magazine. And now we will continue with the free class. Yeah, there we go. So since we've been talking about Ingalls Table, I've got quite a bit of stuff done. I've got the... Um, the silver dollar uke in there, and now I'm just adding some uh, seeded uke in there, and it just gives it texture. There's lots of variety of eucalyptus. Mm -hmm. So now I'm gonna show you what I did with this fruit to get it in there so it doesn't fall over. So what I did was I just took some 
fruit from Abby, because she <laughs> already had it here. Mm -hmm. And I cut a stem off of one of my eucalyptus. I plugged a hole in the end, and I stuck it straight into that oasis. And so I'm going to add this piece right here just so you can see. How oh, that's so hole. nice. So and I mean, you could leave hole. it just like that. Absolutely. And that would be a great during the whole holiday season, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. And it la you know, even once you puncture this root, it still lasts, you know, for actually weeks. So anything that you want to try, don't be afraid. The only thing I can tell you, the most thing I can tell you about floral industry is don't be afraid to try something. Because if it doesn't work, it's easy to tear apart and start over. Mm -hmm. So every time when you're designing, though, just remember, when you are working with cut flowers, they always need a fresh cut. These are so because beautiful. Because what happens is when you stick them in without fresh cut, they're not drinking. It takes approximately three to ten seconds for a flower stem to steal, seal. So this is sealed because it's been laying on the counter for a while. So you can put it in water. It's going to push water up to the head. But when it gets there, it's not going to feed the flower at How that often, point. How often, you know, should they water this? I would say just check every time you walk by with a bottle of water and you don't like to drink the bottom of it. Pour it in your flowers. So it's just going to keep it fresh. It just keeps it fresh. Right. Absolutely. It just keeps it fresh and keeps it um, looking good. And it also helps you. Um, people think that you're fresh and you're doing new things all the time. Right. So this is just a few sunflowers. Um, I'm not going to do a whole lot, I don't think, to this, just because I've got a lot of fruit and I've got I a lot of I love it the way it is. It. I think it and looks I'm not going to put great. a lot more in it, but I just thought I'd tell you different, show you different things. Mm -hmm. um, orange roses. Everything in this container has come from Ingles. Yeah. Actually, from... Um, a couple angles. I stopped at a you couple. You could do of white stores, ones. You could anything. do any kind of colors. Yeah, so the I purple. Mean, right now, um, we're just getting into fall, so a lot of the deep fall burgundies and rust and butterscotches, they're just not in in the field yet for the crops. So we're using more transitional colors, ones that are getting ready to go out for the season, and they're still here, ready for the new ones to come in the mm -hmm. season. Okay, so. so now what we're going to do is we're going to put a few berries in there. I think we're going to be done with it once we get the berries attached. This is what we call hypericum berry. And carry this year round. Comes in multiple colors. Comes in reds. Comes in a peachy color. Comes in white. Um, it's, a, it's a nice asset and it's really good for centerpiece work. So we're just going to keep adding and poking. You know, Peggy, this is my favorite time of the year to where you can just play with right. all these different colors. I exactly. mean, no matter what your interior, what colors you're going for, what are the colors this fall? What are the most popular, the, the trends? Um, right now I'm seeing a lot of dark, a lot of deep, a lot of burgundies, a lot of rust. Um, people are going to simplistic. They're, they're not... Um, more natural more natural and a lot of sticks a lot of foliage mm -hmm. in in years past people have used a lot of flowers and you know just leather leaf which is your most common green and now people are discovering gosh you know what there's other foliage out there so yes. let's incorporate it right and right. so especially me I could do anything with green and never put a flower in it because I really love the foliage and I love texture so for me that's a good way to go but I think we've got enough. I think it's excellent. How beautiful that and is. we've incorporated so many different things. We've incorporated greens. We've incorporated fruits. We've incorporated flowers. We've incorporated berries. So Abby's putting a finishing touch. And there you have it, uh, Peggy. You Outstanding. What? And what do you like most about doing this? Creating. I like teaching. Absolutely. You, you do an excellent job. And thank you for joining, joining us today on Field of Fork. And you represent Ingalls so well. Thank you. And I, I really mean that. I do a lot with Ingalls. Absolutely. They're and, my account, so they're like my second home. And Falcon Farms is who uh, employs you. Falcon to, Farms is my company. Ingalls is my account. So yeah. um, Ingalls is, is actually my family. Yeah, mine too. Yeah. So, um, Thank you again, and you know, let's get festive, let's have fun with this holiday season, and we'll be right back. Nobody loves me.
At Ingalls, we have a very special family. A family of farmers, ranchers, and dairymen. Clerks, butchers, and bakers. Deli workers, pharmacists, and florists. We work hard every day to bring you the very best. And we'll continue to wake up every morning and work as hard as you do. This is our town, and we built this community together. Ingalls, your neighbor for over 50 years. Welcome back to Field of Fork and today new product alert. My friend Gus Arendelle that owns Springer Mountain Farms has come out with a chicken burger. That's right, a chicken burger with 24 grams of protein. He's talking my language now because I've been watching my diet and trying to eat right and this is a great way to do it. And today I'm featuring the chicken burger with a pepper jack cheese and I'm featuring it with my sweet and spicy, and this is my habanero peach jam. You just want to take a little bit, put it on the burger, spread it out, make sure you get it on the burger. Um, but it's so good. You only have to cook it three minutes on each side, and then I put the cheese over on it, and then we're going to take the tomato, put it on top of it with some fresh arugula, Top it like this, and we've got one more. Top it like this, and there you have it. That is an Abby J sweet and spicy chicken burger. This uh, is going to be available at local retailers. So eat healthy, and thank you, Gus, for bringing this really great product to market and we'll be right back. At Ingalls we know the ever-present struggle of what am I going to make for dinner this week? That's why we started the Ingalls Table. It's a website that brings the best chefs and food experts right into your kitchen. You can sort through hundreds of recipes for every occasion, watch how-to videos, and print shopping lists to take to the store. It's all waiting for you at IngallsTable.com. Until next time, I'll see you online. Ingalls, low prices, love the savings. Welcome back to Field of Fork. We have taken a road trip and we're up here in Tallulah Falls on this beautiful fall day. And we're here to talk to Tallulah 1882 Tea House, Coffee and Baked Goods. And we're getting ready to meet the owner. So let's go. We're inside at 1882 at the Tea House and Baked Goods and Coffee, and I'm with Christine and Priscilla. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having us. Thank you very much. Thank you. So tell us, how did this venture start, Christine? Um, well, my love for tea, um, and I had a tea shop back in Florida. Um, so I, you know, I've been driving by this empty building with Priscilla on our way to work last year, and we kind of got to thinking what a great place it would be and um, Grant who is my partner he right. also concurred and so he found out that it was for rent and we got to rent it and now we are um, providing baked goods for our community um, you know the fresh fresh every day um, we have gourmet coffees and organic herbal teas for our customers um, and it's just something a great place for people to connect for people to pause for a minute you know take a breath kind of read a book, you know, whatever it is they want to do here. So we are a loving environment. I uh, totally get it. And it's beautiful here. It, it's offering everybody, the locals, something new. And Priscilla, you were a baker at Ingalls Markets, and that's how you got your start, right? Yeah, I started working there um, when we moved here last year and um, just worked there in the daytime and then just realized I like baking a lot and started baking every day for a month straight and just fell in love with baking. So what do you enjoy baking? Uh, I like cakes and scones and biscuits and all different types of things, yeah. Well, what a great start. That That's wonderful because now you can share that loving passion in a, a, a very unique location. And talking about this location, tell us some history, Christy. Um, well, this is the second building. Um, so the original depot was burned down in the big fire that the Cliff Hotel also was taken at that time. Rufus Moss, who built this and brought the train, 
to Tallulah Falls. He has his historic house up there. Um, and so um, basically they had to rebuild this after the fire. The house stayed and did not get burned down. And um, so this building is built in 1913, 1914. And when we found it, it was dusty and had a lot of stories to tell, I thought, you know. Um, we are all very old souls here, Priscilla, myself, and my two daughters that run the shop, and, and including Grant, too. We're all vintage lovers, and when that, we walked in, and it was just the way it was, we knew that we could just move in and kind of take over this abandoned space and make it something new. You've done a very good job with it so far, and there's more to come, right? More to come, yeah. We're going to be open on Thursdays. We're going to be doing some special invite-only dinners that will be... Um, kind of a, a full course meal from dessert to, you know, from soup, nuts to dessert. And um, mm -hmm. all organic ingredients, farm to table when we can. Um, and uh, Priscilla will be baking a nice item for those meals. Um, so that's something to look forward to for another way to connect with the community and have some space for people to just enjoy something different, something out of the ordinary. I think it's very unique and out of the ordinary because when I uh, saw you on Facebook, I said, oh my goodness, I love the herbal teas. I love everything that you're doing with uh, the baked goods, the quiches. Uh, thank you. It was so delicious. They gave me a piece of a slice of <laughs> two slices. I ended up eating both of them. <laughs> yeah. So uh, anyway, uh, outside you've built on a patio though. Talk to us about the patio. We did a wraparound porch when Grant got here. He saw the necessity. We had a beautiful, the original boarding for the train, and but it was very wonky being over 100 years old. So we needed to just cover it up. We wanted to keep the historical value of the building. We can't really change that. We're just the caretakers. And so we just created a, a nice safe spot for people to enjoy and walk around the building. Um, the double doors that are around the exterior of the building, those were the boarding doors, you know, for the luggage and people embarking on their trip or coming home. Um, one of the main things here was, you know, a lot of connections and that will continue throughout. It'll be a little bit different, but, you know, still that bond. You're connecting in a different way, and this has got so much history, and, and it's special that you recreated it. We recreated our farmhouse. It's a 1860s farmhouse, and then turned it into a fly fishing lodge on the Sequoia River. So you're doing the same thing. Is you know you finding another purpose and a special purpose for it? Embracing history, embracing also the new, and bringing it together. And we definitely, one of our main goals here is to connect with nature as well. Um, you know, Eva, my daughter, who's our barista, she has her own skin care line, which is behind you. And so, you know, we, we pay ode to the earth and meaning, you know, with the teas, with tinctures. We also have a lot of folks that come here to visit that are herbalists and that we all kind of brainstorm together. And it's just a really great you know, symmetry. I love How that. interesting. I mean, so what else do you offer that we haven't talked about? Um, you know, I, you know, we have lovely grab and go for charcuterie. That's another thing that will be coming up down the road. Um, we have um, just items that are kind of unusual. I have grab and go teas. Um, my other daughter, Charlie, who's our tea sommelier, she makes handmade dresses so she, you know you can go around the corner and pick out something handmade or something vintage so we all kind of have our between baking and potions and lotions dresses tea this is kind of what we do <laughs> well you have so many things that's a lost art that you're bringing back to life and that's what i love about this the homemade the home baked goods mm -hmm. where you you're doing it from scratch and that's folks that's hard to find it really is. Yes. Yeah, there are easier ways to do it, um, but we've chosen not to because we just want to be authentic as we are. Absolutely, and, and I have to admire your work ethic because it takes time to bake. It takes time to preserve food. I preserve food. I grow a garden, and I'm sure you've got a garden somewhere, right? Um, well, it was going to be a victory garden, but it turned out to be the Garden of Shame. So I'm not going to I'm not going to brag about my garden. Um, <laughs> you know, I don't grow my own herbs. I get them, you know, from other places. Of you could get herbs from me. So I have, I have lots of so I've, I've, I've got mint. I've got chocolate mint. I've okay. got uh, basil. I, I have the spearmint that grows prolific I on am. my farm. So sorry. 
I am very inspired by all the gardeners here. Um, people, Chef um, Inger comes by and brings us stuff too, beautiful organic stuff. And everyone is such a sharing, loving, supportive community that, um, you know, I get a little bit, um, you know, choked up about it, to be honest mm -hmm. with you. We've yeah. not ever really seen this kind of love, Bond. this yeah. love, this just people coming in and really being so receptive. And I think that's what I noticed on your post in that people like Bonnie Edmonds, uh, oh, she, I do too, <laughs> she, she's been on my show and, and she's very a good soul that does some of the same homemade Hard work hard worker just the qualities that you look and and just see her food is just amazing clayton cafe inspiration. and inspiration she is yeah lots of vitality and yeah like you know it's really nice to see other people that you know are chefs and bakers and you could just bounce off ideas and really bond with certain people and just you know you guys all love the same thing and it's just beautiful it too. is it's almost spiritual because you have this bond and you're building uh, friendships in the community, which is so important. Mm -hmm. So how do you, do you give back to the community or are you going to find ways to give back? I'm sure you are. We have, well, we are working with Tallulah Falls School. Um, you know, they they have a scholarship program that we're helping out with because um, they have races, bike races, which. Um, I'm, I'm aware. I give, I, so, yes. So that's what we're doing. So we're, we're you know, going to be. Doing that, that's our first thing. Um, and then we're looking for um, some type of, uh, whether it be, you know, a nature conservator, you know, that we can donate to. So we're just working on it because we have been open one month as of um, yesterday. Just one month, and guys, this place is, you know, packed. I, I mean, I'm, I'm seeing everything just come to life, and, uh, you know, it brought me here within one month so who knows where you're going but it's in a great direction it's in a positive direction and i'm i wish you the most success and you are truly entrepreneurs and i'm i'm so proud to see you open this up and 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 i hope uh it just continues to to blossom because that's what it's done within one month I've heard a lot of good things about it. Well, tell the audience uh, how they can find you in your days that you were open. Okay, so um, we are uh, located at 105 Moss Street in Tallulah Falls, Georgia. Um, our, we are closed Mondays and Tuesdays, open 7 to 3 on Wednesday. Thursdays, our new hours are 10 until 6 p.m. And then Fridays and Saturdays, 8 to 3. Is there anything else you would like to share? Um, just wanted to shout out to everybody that has been supportive because without them, we would not be here. You, you know, you've got to try this. Uh, I, I put my stamp on it. <laughs> and thank you for being on the show today. Thank you very much. All right. Appreciate it. We're doing what we love here. All right. Until next time, we'll see you on Field of Fork. Thanks so much for joining us for today's program. We look forward to having you back next time on Field to Fork Cooking with Abby J. This program is brought to you in part by Ingalls Supermarkets and the Ingalls Table and is a video production of Kinetic TV.